So we're now recording. So welcome to uh, the fall 2020 Monday webinar series on Minerva's academic curriculum or MAC. Uh, today we're talking about teaching and diversity and equity competency and it is being led by Laura Pipe from the UTLC and Teaching Innovation Office. So Laura, you can take it over. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I first want to actually turn it over to Frances because she's going to give you a little background um, on the series, but also on this particular competency. And then I will have our panelists introduce themselves. So Frances. Thanks so much, Laura. Thanks, Sam. So welcome everyone. This is, uh, I think the fourth or fifth Mac Monday session we've held this semester. This is inaugural series. We hope to continue in the spring and beyond. Uh, so these are all very short noon hour sessions online where we address various topics related to Mac. We've talked about advising and course proposal processes so far, among other topics. This is really exciting today because it's our very first uh, teaching focused session. Uh, as Sam mentioned, we're gonna focus in on the diversity and equity competency in Mac today. And Laura has um, wonderfully agreed to, to moderate the panel and we'll introduce our panelists shortly. Since this is our first foray into talking teaching and Mac in this particular web series, please feel free to give us feedback on what you think and what you'd like to see in terms of topics in the future as well. Sam, at the end of the session, which will wrap up just about 1240, will drop a survey link into the chat. So feel free to give us some feedback in that, in that way. Okay, I'd like to actually just offer you three links here in the chat posted now. And I wanna just mention quickly what they link to. So we have, first of all, uh, one of the wonderful things about this new program is that it's been really lovingly created and crafted by groups of expert faculty who care very much about particular competencies and skill sets that this program is all about. So actually the first link, and I'm gonna go ahead and screen share if you don't mind real quick. Oh, sorry, Sam, you're actually screen sharing. <laughs> um, Sam, would you mind perhaps clicking on that first link to take us to the rubric? Oh, now I can share, so I will share. Great. All right. So can you see my, can you see my, Google Doc. Can you see the Google yes. Doc, everyone? Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm working from my laptop because for some reason my desktop is not working today. So <laughs> I'm sort of trying to navigate a lot of different screens. So my apologies. So as I was saying, every Mac competency has a, a fantastic uh, document that you can link to that tells you about the, the official definition of the competency and uh, also contains really helpful features like a glossary where you can read up on technical terms that are really important to understand sort of the technical work that went into producing these um, student learning outcomes and the competency descriptions. And then you also have an assessment rubric where you can actually access each of the student learning outcomes. You can see SLO number one listed here. And it's broken down in terms of different levels of mastery. I don't wanna spend more time on this now, but if there are any questions during our session today relating to this assessment rubric, uh, I'd be happy to, to address uh, as well as any of the panelists who were on the, the committees that formed this rubric. So that's just a really great resource for you to know about. The other one uh, that I wanted to mention real quick is of course the MAC website. And so the second link that I posted in the chat will take you to this page, faculty. Sorry if it's a little bit uh, distorted looking, but it is a faculty page for things related to MAC. You can access the diversity and equity information that we were just looking at here as well. And of course, uh, the rubric. And you can also learn about any of the other MAC competencies on this same page. 
And the last thing I'll mention, which is pretty cool, uh, the, this page ends with a table of approved MAC courses. So if you were interested, for instance, in knowing about what courses have been included uh, in MAC under diversity and equity, you can actually search by diversity or equity and you will get a full list of all of the courses. And I love this because you can see there's, there's really a lot of range uh, already in, in the catalog in terms of what folks are, are offering and proposing for this competency, which I think is really wonderful. And the last thing I'll say is the, the final link that I posted in the chat, and perhaps Harriet, you might jump in at this point, is this fantastic self-enrolling um, Canvas org for folks talking about and teaching diversity and equity on our campus. And Harriet has, has actually been the inaugural MAC Faculty Fellow for Diversity and Equity this past academic year and has put this together. Well, um, thank you, uh, Francis. I, I would like to say that this, um, this Canvas page is um, under construction. It has been under construction, but we have um, divided this into modules per se, so that um, it, it provides, you know, faculty with an opportunity to, um, you know, get introduced to the, um, the diversity and equity competency and some tools to help them kind of become grounded in um, the inclusivity of diversity and equity. Then we move on to um, something that I borrowed from Sam, which was the competency-based education. Again, getting into how to set up your classes and your syllabi that would help you to address those competencies for the diversity and equity um, part of MAC. And then we move on, we're developing and we'll, I will start dropping in some, um, some files and some direction for the um, cultural awareness piece. And then getting into implicit biases um, as, as far as even um, identifying our own implicit biases as we are the instructors and making sure that we are not engaged in some type of unconscious bias, um, even with the development of our courses. Um, eventually, we will add some um, resources on cultural proficiency. And then I think finally we'll get into cultural humility, which is where we all want to be, which allows us to be accepting and embracing of all cultures, regardless of where we are from. And it, it gets to a level of understanding and then being able to convey that to our students and the individuals that we engage with. So that's just kind of in general, an overall look at um, how we are developing um, and adding to this um, Canvas competency area. Um, and you can self-enroll so that you can also add um, documents, you can add syllabi. Um, our hope is to have a cadre of syllabi that people are using across campus um, from the diversity and equity competency. So that, that's really all I have to add about that, the, the actual, um, the Canvas site. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much, Harriet. All right, Laura, take it away. Great, thanks. Um, thank you both for that brief introduction to the DE competency and some resources that we have. Um, I want to introduce our panelists or have our panelists introduce themselves um, to you. We have a good group, um, small but mighty, <laughs> working on this with us. Um, so I'll start with Deanne, because you're first on my screen. If you can introduce yourself and then share a little bit about your role and work um, with d and &E as a competency. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Deanne Brooks. I am an AP Associate Professor in Kinesiology. I have the pleasure of having my role at UNCG um, be focused around teaching. And that's exactly where I wanna be as a, as a professional. I teach at the undergraduate level as well as the graduate level. I currently serve as our, our department's um, 
Director of Graduate Programs, and I'm also the co-chair of our department's Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Committee. I am on the Faculty Senate EDI Committee as well and um, attend every single UTLC DEI EDI event that I can. Um, I come to this the work with this competency. I was on the task force that helped develop um, the, comp the, the language and, and the rubric. But way, way back, you know, this is just something that's important to me. It is really personal. I mean, I, I feel like having these competencies um, in place in institutions would mean that the experience that I had as a student, as a black woman born and raised in North Carolina, um, very raised by very proud parents who told, told me and taught me that I can do and be anything that I wanted to be. But um, that same message wasn't necessarily communicated through my education. And so I think that, um, there are lots of implications when these sorts of competencies are either siloed or not included in within the, the, the center of an education curriculum. And uh, for that personal reason and, and those personal experiences, learning about trying to implement uh, DEI competencies has been at the center of my work as a teacher since, you know, probably even before I knew what EDI was. And so that's, that's why I'm here and happy to converse with anybody who is um, interested in these topics. So happy to be here. Thanks for the invitation. And I look forward to this panel. Great. Um, Lindsay, you're next. Good afternoon, everyone. Lindsay Wolker, she, hers pronouns. I am the director of the Office of Leadership and Civic Engagement. And um, I also serve uh, on the I think what it's called um, is the curricular co-curricular um, committee. And so that committee is looking at the integration um, between our curricular and co-curricular approaches. Uh, the MAC area is a piece of that conversation, um, but I have been um, kind of leading out uh, with Harriet, thank you, Harriet, um, on the DEI small group. Um, and so having conversations with faculty across campus who have identified courses as Francis and Harriet showed us um, that are DEI identified um, and talking to them about how we can incorporate and integrate co-curricular opportunities um, to enhance, to elevate, to deepen the understanding for students, um, looking at what faculty are already teaching and what student affairs or co-curricular um, opportunities are already providing and how we can marry those two to deepen the experience for students. Um, so the work, that's the work I guess, in terms of relation to MAC, but um, in for OLSI, um, we do a lot, you know, focused on DEI. Um, I'm glad that Gus is on the panel, one of our strong partners um, in this work uh, to educate our students and on the importance of this. Um, and, and obviously we were a civic engagement. So like we cannot have a thriving democracy without these components. Um, so that's what we're looking for. Um, we're hoping to uh, educate our students to be those change makers that are going out and creating change in their communities. And the only way to do that um, is to not only focus on self-awareness when it comes to EDI work, but also your relationship to community. Um, and so that's that's a lot of the work that um, that we provide. Great. Gus. Good afternoon, friends. Gus or Augusto is perfectly fine. I use he, him pronouns, and I serve as director of intercultural engagement in the Division of Student Affairs, along with Lindsay. Um, I'm in my sixth year at UNC Greensboro. Um, let's see. It's it's also deeply personal work, as Deanne was talking about, like you're, you're coming up through the educational system. For me, it's really, really deeply personal to be able to do this work um, and to be on a college campus partnering with faculty from across uh, various departments. Um, also like Deanne, um, I guess two or three years ago, I also served on a committee that helped draft um, the diversity and equity domain. So been hanging out with this for a few years now. I serve on the um, EDI subcommittee within the faculty senate um let's see 
And as we get into the conversation, I'm excited to share about some of the programs that we offer that folks might be interested in incorporating into their curriculum. And I'll talk a little bit about some of what Lindsay was sharing uh, um, about with um, the, um, the MAC on the academic side, and then some of the things that we're doing in student affairs to um, have there be a closer connection, a, a little bit more synchronization in terms of the learning outcomes on the academic side and the learning outcomes that we have on the student affairs side so that we're complementing each other and the work that we do in student affairs can enrich and accentuate and further the work that um, faculty are doing. So happy to be here. Thanks, Laura. Great. And I also just want to acknowledge there are several people on this Zoom call, um, actually the majority of us, that actually helped develop these and were a huge part of that. Um, Harriet being definitely a huge significant piece of that conversation and that original group that built the three SLOs and the rubric. Um, and then Jennifer Stevens, who was involved with this all the way back with the first GERT um, conversation as well. Um, Harriet and Jennifer, do either of you want to introduce yourselves as well? Sure. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Harriet Bailey. I'm an AP associate professor in um, human development and family studies. Um, I'm the BK undergraduate program coordinator. And um, I come to this work from, again, a deeply personal um, standpoint or viewpoint. Um, and a few years ago, I was able to work with the um, Department of um, Health and Human Services and also um, working with the um, Division of Early Childhood. And we put together um, a cultural competency training for early childhood professionals across the state. Um, and um, in doing that and, and being deeply engaged in that process, um, just kind of solidified the fact that we need to start early with early childhood. Um, and so um, infusing a lot of these principles into the teacher education portion of what we are doing um, in Berkeley Kindergarten um, would prepare teachers to work with a diverse population um, to eliminate some of the disconnections that are happening between um, marginalized communities as they enter into their educational experiences. And those early experiences typically lay the foundation for um, you know, children's education through 12th grade. And so we want to make sure that those um, experiences are positive ones, that they are ones that are um, inclusive in nature and that they are supportive, getting some of that support that Deanne was talking about that she was getting at home, but not necessarily at school. Those, all of those pieces make up a, a healthy community for our children. And so um, I'm deeply ingrained in this work. Um, which is why I, um, I chose to continue working um, with faculty across campus to make sure that it's not just in the education piece of it as far as um, early childhood, but we want it to be, you know, universal. And so we want to, you know, start with faculty using some of these principles, and even if their class is not designated d &E. Right, um, it still applies. So that's kind of my background. And uh, so thank you for inviting me. Hello everybody, I'm Jennifer Stevens. I serve as the director of our residential colleges office, our teacher education fellows program, and as associate director of the UTLC with Laura Pipe. Um, diversity, equity, inclusion work is very important to me personally. Um, I think it is a hallmark of who we are as an institution. Um, so for me, it's very critical in both my scholarship and praxis that this is a part of the work that we all do and that we're supportive of one another in doing this work. 
Thanks. I kind of put some folks on the spot there, so sorry, but thank you for very much graciously um, joining in on that part of the conversation. But my first question um, that I wanted to pose to this group, so, you know, Francis and Sam shared this beautiful set of learning outcomes and this beautiful rubric, which can be really wonderful to go through. But I want to get to the heart of what this competency really means, particularly for those of you who were part of the authoring process. Um, so if you could share from your perspective, why is this competency important? And what are the parts of this competency that are really the heart of what needs to be included in the course components that we create? And it was a big question. Deanne and I talked about that beforehand. She's like, it's a really big question. <laughs> yeah, I can. So since you come, said my name. Um, I, I did. I, I do think this was a really big question. Um, but it goes back to something uh, to me that Jennifer just said, which is that we, we claim this is a we claim it as a hallmark of our university. Um, when you're driving down the highway, you see the billboard about UNCG, number one in social mobility. Um, we hear all the time we're the most diverse campus in the UNC system. Um, we had the, the racial equity button on the homepage for, I think, all of last year, maybe even longer than that. So this is something that we sell, right, that, that we, we promote as part of our identity as a campus, as a community. And I, I believe that part of our conversation as we were um, discussing these competencies was we need to make sure that we are walking the walk and not only promoting these things that might have, um, that might be good for marketing purposes, but what structurally do we have on the books that shows that we are intentional about um, something like social mobility, like that, that's not about just hard working. That's not just about being smart in the classroom and getting good grades. That's, that's a structural issue. The fact that social mobility is so limited in this country is because there are policies that limit um, generations from overcoming particular social economic circumstances. And so I believe that in particular at UNCG, this competency is important because um, it ensures that students are actually um, positioned to intelligently and thoughtfully um, take the education that they might receive here and, and, and grow from it. And so that's how I might answer that, that first question um, in particular to, to our, our place here at UNCG. I think I, oh, I'm sorry, Harry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, so my thought um, to add to what Deanne just said is the, the piece of the, the SLOs that say um, that we are identifying and we are helping students to identify the systems and the structures that um, in the past and that are currently impacting um, students' ability to feel included and to actually be included. And so being intentional about that is what I think is um, important in addition to what has already been stated. Um, I was like s s being semi-dramatic, but really the fate of our democracy, I think, lies in our ability to communicate this um, SLO and the components of it. Um, I, and I also think realistically, if you're thinking about what, what our students are leaving UNCG with, um, we are doing them a disservice if they are not having these types of conversations, if they are not critically reflecting, if they are not doing self-awareness, if they are not learning how to communicate across difference, these are things that employers want to see. So if you're looking at a very critical component of like what we're hoping that they graduate with, these are skills that they need to have in order to be successful beyond the walls of UNCG. They need to have the ability 
to engage in these types of difficult dialogues around topics that, that are challenging um, and be able to navigate those spaces and be able to look at these systemic issues that are occurring and see how what is their role in addressing those things. And so if we are not encouraging them to have these types of dialogues, we are not doing our job as educators in creating a space for them to be able to dissect and to, um, to again, be reflective in, in those spaces and in those experiences. And so I think, I think it's critically important for us to, to engage in these topics, um, to be dramatic <laughs> for the sake of our like society. Um, I mean, I, quite honestly, I think, um, I think without these conversations, um, we're doing all of us a disservice. And I'll, I'll add maybe a different perspective if I can. Um, and I'm gonna share a screen so that while I'm sharing the point that I wanna make, you all can see, uh, hopefully, let's see, there's a, uh, yeah, a screen. And if the text is not large enough, I can increase it a little bit. Okay, and what I wanna focus on is the student learning outcomes. Okay, so what I wanted to say is this, and I need to actually see one person, so I'm not talking into the into space. Okay, um, so for me, this competency, this domain is important because it's led to our office having a very specific set of learning outcomes that are that are focused on this. Um, I remember the meetings that I would attend a couple of years ago when we were drafting and coming up with all of this stuff. And some of the sentiment, at least, that I felt was, can, can we really do this? Are we really doing this? Are we really trying to define for who knows how many classes of UNCG students are gonna, that are gonna come to UNCG, what part of their gen ed curriculum is going to include? We're actually defining this stuff. <clears throat> that felt really radical. It felt super empowering. It also felt like a little bit like, wow, they're really going to let us do this where we're drafting the, 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 these things. And so I think it's important because it's led to <clears throat> on the student affairs side. I don't know that it led to um, it necessarily, but some of the work that we're doing in student affairs with a co-curricular approach, and this may be something that you were going to share about, Lindsay, is that we're defining the competencies and the learning objectives that all UNCG students should have when they engage with student affairs. So I think there's five competencies or domains is what we call them. And one of them is EDI work. And we've done the same thing. We have one common definition for what doing diversity work should look like. What every program that has a learning objective that's diversity focused, it needs to fit within this one common definition, the same thing that's happening here on the academic side. So I am excited because it's led to um, what, what I'm sharing with you here is that every program that's offered by, by intercultural engagement um, is thinking about the MAC competency as we're developing our program, as we're thinking about how we're going to assess its effectiveness, we're going to the MAC definition for guidance because we wanna be um, connected um, to, to the MAC, to, to what's going on on the academic side of the house. Um, so the stuff that I'll share in a little bit, all of it's been designed to enrich and to help faculty go even beyond what they're doing in the classroom. Um, and so it, it should hopefully be, um, something that provides lots of opportunities for collaboration. I will pause there. Great, and, and I can just share also, cause um, I was part of that group as well that helped craft these. Another significant part of why this competency is so important. Um, and it's something if you come to a lot of UTLC programs, you've heard Jennifer and I talk about over and over, we know the top four indicators of student success that comes out of the research of Vince Tinto and Alexander Aston and George Koo, who've done a lot of research on how students progress and how do we retain them. The number one indicator is faculty to student engagement and the number two is peer to peer engagement. And that is why from our perspective over in the UTLC, 
having conversations around diversity and equity infused throughout the student experience is essential because if students know that there's issues going on, right? These challenges, they're facing them. Many of our students are living these experiences and we don't acknowledge them not only as an institution, but as professionals, as faculty, as staff on this campus, our students can really begin to write us off, right? And, and see us not as an ally or an asset or someone supporting them, but also see us as someone ignoring the greater issues that they are facing and living daily. Um, so that is one of the, to me, one of the really important reasons that this is in MAC. It really not just puts our, our actions where our words are, but it also gives our students that, that space that we're acknowledging that these are ongoing challenges and issues that they're living through and that we are a place to wrestle with these and we're in the wrestling with them. Um, and so that, that to me is really is significantly important because we don't want to separate our students, particularly from the number one indicator of student success, which is faculty to student engagement, right? And so the more and more we have these infused in the student experience, the more the students can see themselves in the conversations, in the work that needs to be done um, as a campus. Okay, so I've been watching the chat with Sam and it doesn't look like we have any questions, but if you do have questions for the panelists, please either use the chat or you can unmute yourself because we're a small group. Um, so my next question um, is really about how do we operationalize these learning outcomes. So particularly for Harriet and Deanne, how do we, how do you start thinking about taking and tackling these as part of your subject matter and the courses you teach? And from Lindsay and Gus, your perspective, what are some of the programs and components that are happening in student affairs that become tools for helping faculty accomplish these learning outcomes in their courses? Well, um, in particular, in the courses that I teach, um, we have um, required a, a textbook that is about anti-bias, regardless of um, the, you know, where children come from and where um, our student teachers are coming from. We're talking about anti-bias. And so we infuse a level of reflection in every assignment. We have discussions during class about, um, you know, and it's, it's about getting um, comfortable having the tough discussions that students may be experiencing on campus, but they also may be having these experiences in their daily lives. And being able to um, place emphasis on those experiences to validate those experiences. Because there are many times um, in these discussions that other students have no idea that these things are taking place. They don't know anyone who has um, had this particular experience. And so we kind of walk through what that looks like. We offer strategies. So it is just making the discussion part of what we do every day. And I think that has helped us um, because on the back end of it, I've had students say, thank you for bringing that up or thank you for um, having this discussion because this is the experience that I had. And others will say, I never even knew that this was going on and it's happening right in front of my face. So I think that we do this from um, not a place of judgment or a place of finger pointing, but just a place of sharing lived experiences. And then what do we do with those experiences? Even if you aren't the one 
that has the experience, what can you do as a person observing this experience happening? That gets into um, building a community of, um, you know, these are things that are not acceptable. Not only are they not acceptable at UNCG, but in society as a whole, these are unacceptable and this is how I can become engaged. Um, so we, we start at the beginning and just kind of work through um, and we're, we are weaving this into all of our courses, all of our core curriculum in, um, in birth through kindergarten. So that's how we are addressing it and including the diversity and equity piece um, in our work. Yes, yeah, so I, I, thanks, Harriet. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, I, I, I appreciate everything that you said. And I, I think that's certainly um, the perspective that I have as well in terms of infusing the, these ideas and these competencies in every single class. Um, and that, that is one of my goals is that in every lesson we will have um, something around um, uh, structure, but also the personal. Uh, and I think we, that's one of the things that I think is really strong about this um, competency is that we, it focuses on systems and structures, but also agency. And I think the, the combination is really important if we're going to move forward. Um, one of the assignments that I did in my coaching class, for instance, I teach foundations of sport coaching. And, um, you know, the sport is one of those domains that people have described as the great equalizer, right? We're, we're all on the same team. We all get together. We're all going for the same goal. You know, um, you know we're, we're, we're all teammates. So we're, we're, that, that kind of thing is, is a very popular narrative. Um, and I understand that a lot of a lot of our the, the people in that class have played sports and had really positive experiences. Um, and even over the years, that tends to be one of the places where they may engage with people who are not from their home communities. So they might feel like that's the place where diversity happens. Um, and so one of the ways that I address uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion in all of my courses in kinesiology is to start with what I know students tend to believe and trust and that um, we're trained sometimes to trust statistics and data. And um, I'm lucky that there are several reports out there that I can send students to. So one of the ones that I like is the NCAA demographic survey and the NC North, um, National Collegiate Athletics Association. And so, it is a demographics tool um, that talks about however many thousands of student athletes that there are in this country, but it gives a very clear and stark picture that there are maybe two or three sports out of the 26 in NCAA athletics that has decent representation of people who, of color. And so when you start there, then it backs us into the conversation of why is this? You know, is okay. So we have a lot of black people in basketball, not so much in lacrosse. Um, why is that? Some of the skills are the same. Um, uh, you know, it's still competitive. Uh, what, what are what are what are those factors? What are those cultural factors? What are some of those structural issues? Um, but then I don't stop there, right? We talk about it. The 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 assignment for that unit is an inclusion infographic. And so we're gonna take some stats, we're gonna identify an issue, we're gonna go to the literature to make sure that we have an understanding of the structural factors that might be impacting this issue. And then guess what? We're gonna do something about it. I expect that you're gonna go out and be coaches this is how I talk to the to the students. I expect that you're going to be you're going to go out into the community and be coaches, and we as kinesiologists believe that sport and physical activity are human right. So, what are we going to do to increase participation in our sports? And so, there there is a lot of um, sort of strategic maneuvering to start students where they are um, to build community around something. In our case, it might be 
We are all kinesiologists. We all have athletic backgrounds. But then to point out some of the things that have been unseen or maybe erased in the way that we talk about sports and physical activity and then um, help students make a plan for change. And I try to do that across the board. I teach, co the sport, uh, teach, I teach classes like sport coaching. I teach um, uh, foundations of human uh, instructing physical activity. You know, we're still talking about working with people. So these ideas still are relevant. I teach measurement and evaluation in kinesiology. So now we can talk about, well, who was involved in developing this particular survey? And do, the, do people from various communities read and respond to these questions in the same way? So there are ways to infuse these um, equi diversity and equity competencies across the board. I actually don't have one on the books that's on this list, but um, like Gus has said, and like Harriet has said, I am led by these competencies in all of my classes. And I think it makes things more interesting. Um, the other thing that I do is to check in with students constantly. When we had that conversation about inclusion in sport last week, in a virtual class on Zoom where most of the students didn't have their, their cameras on, I was particularly, not worried, but um, I was particularly concerned with checking in to see how students were dealing with the content that might have been um, new to them. And several have very positive things to say. And so I say it can, you know, I think folks are a little hesitant about diving into these conversations, but um, in my experiences, it's what students, especially students who come to UNCG, it is what they expect, as Laura said, and they are willing to participate and learn and grow. And for me, it makes class a whole lot more fun. So we are right at 1245, right at time. So I know folks might have to jump out, but I don't want to overlook um, Lindsay and Gus and the work that you're doing in student affairs. I know you put a number of links in the chat and Gus graciously sent out um, a one pager to all of us. Um, but I do want to just give you guys a brief moment to kind of share any particularly Lindsay and Gus, anything that really would be helpful for faculty as they begin thinking about the next stages with these courses? Sure, I'll be the briefest of the briefest. Um, happy to consult by, by Zoom, by phone, chat, um, as anyone is, is developing courses or has had conversations come up in the classroom and they'd like to like workshop those. Um, as, as Harriet said, students are coming to our campuses, they'd like to be themselves 100% authentically, fully themselves when, when they enter the classroom and not have to shed any parts of them or cover up any parts of them. And that's hard to do that. And it's hard uh, to know all the things that we all should know to do less harm and do more good and, and to welcome people. It's not an, an easy lift for anybody. So I appreciate the folks that are here and others who are not here who have the humility and who have the interest in doing right by all of our students. So thank you for that. Um, and so we're happy to partner. Uh, the one pager covers all of our programs and how we can connect. Um, my interest is in helping you all do your job because when you're able to do your job, then our students are happy and healthy and successful. And I want the same thing for them as well. So we're, we're all here for the same reason. Um, so yeah, don't be shy, reach out if we can help. Thanks. The only thing I'll say is we're talking about breaking down some systemic barriers. Let's break down some barriers between the curricular and co-curricular sides of our institution. Um, and let's work together to make our student experience stronger. So I think, you know, capitalizing on what Gus said, there's a lot of great work happening all across the institution. And by working together, we make the experience for our students stronger. So there's a whole lot that I put in there. Um, there's plenty more that we can do to talk with faculty about how some of our initiatives or expertise can fit within your curriculum. And I just encourage us to continue these conversations um, so that we can together make the experience stronger. Great. Well, thank you to the panelists. Thank you so much for spending this after, this amount of time with us and for cramming, I think, a lot in a very short amount of time. This is certainly one of the 
competencies, I think that can take quite a bit of time to unpack and start to gather together. Um, and thank you, Sam, for hosting us. And thank you everyone for attending. Thanks everyone, have a good week. Thank you.